given. And when we set on information that we don't share with one another, then we can't hold the police department uh, hostage or accountable for information that they don't have. Absolutely. So, so George, now what about Bump and Rob? You see any activity out there with Bump and Rob? Did you hear anything from your social cabbies? You actually saw it? No, I was involved in it. Uh, oh, wow. What happened? Uh, I turned right off of Edmonton Avenue onto Lenhurst. Uh-huh. Uh, Dark Bill, who follows me up, and I noticed how close it was following, and then it deliberately runs into the back of me. Right? Right. So now, being in this business for 27 years, you can tell when someone is doing something deliberately or it was an accident. So I don't stop. I continue to go up Lenhurst, make a ride on Gelston. As I'm making the right, they run into the cab again. Mm -hmm. so, luckily, I saw one jump out of the cab, or jump out of his car and run towards the cab. I started the cab and left the village. So the only reason they didn't actually rob me because I was aware that this could be a setup and I didn't get out of the cab. Did you give us a call? Did you give us a call, the police? Yeah, well, absolutely. Good. Um, I have a police report and everything. Good. And okay, good. Yeah, well, that's what it is. Why these guys are, uh, they became active and got that um, task force going because they've had so many drivers now reporting right. it, not from their association. Exactly. Themselves. Drivers. Exactly. I have a question about that. Do the cab companies still charge you after you get robbed? Oh, absolutely. That's the downfall. I know that. I, I just want to know, is it going on to all the companies or what? I have public service listen to the show, too, as well, as all the cab companies, the drivers. Now, a lot of that is on um, us as drivers, in that we are not unified, we don't communicate, and we allow associations to do things to us because we aren't acting as a group. Now, that, I can't penalize the association for that. Mm -hmm. Same way as the police department. Associations, if they don't know what is harmful to you or causing you problems and making money, then they don't know. We as drivers have to give them that information in the same way we have to give the police department information of incidents that's going on out here. So a lot of that is on us in terms of protecting ourselves and feeding information up the chain to people that can do something about it. Did you give a good description of the person? Uh, Try to rob you and bump against you or anything like that? Any leads? I gave a description of the car and the young person who jumped out of the car. There was at least two in the vehicle. Um, mid sized car, maybe uh, Nissan or something like that, maybe 2003 to 2004. But that's one individual uh, report. The police department needs several reports so that they can and we and we saw several trust me we have af absolutely seen several and that's why the task force was created to to go after this and literally within 24 or 48 hours of that task force we have the first four under arrest uh, because they were getting that bold and unfortunately again when we're dealing with juveniles that makes it more difficult because they get out rather quickly so uh, this go around, many of them are facing adult charges and serious charges. Some were even held without bail because these were serious, serious crimes that they were committing against people. And, and this is why it's so important also. You know, this is an example of why it's important to call the police. Because if we hear that there's an incident in Edmondson Village, and then we hear there's a second incident and a third incident, we may move some of our resources to this Edmondson Village area. So some of the drivers listening that may not want to call and make a report, mm -hmm. it's important that we call. do so right. we can get to this area. Okay. Well, again, in closing, I will, uh, just want to commend the uh, police department for the quick action, and I would uh, ask that our drivers continue to share information with one another and the association so that they, in turn, can give that information to our uh, police department. So again, Larry, I appreciate for bringing this issue to bear. Thank you, Thank my you. friend George. And also, let's go to Brother Carlos. You live on Taxi Talk. How you doing? Hey, hey, thank you for keeping it real. Thank you. This is an old cab driver from the Yellow Cab Company of Tyler Way, many, many years ago. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, I uh, brought this to the attention 
of the, uh, the WLC about a year ago because it started over in Washington. It was happening in Washington, D.C. on a regular basis, uh, the bump and the rob syndrome. So, uh, and lately it has not been reported that they have had that issue. Have you been in contact? Has anybody been in contact with Washington, D.C.? police department or the chief over there to see what kind of uh, procedures that they have enacted to try to uh, stop this type of activity? Well, we were, um, we're always in contact with uh, D.C. police, actually, just because we're in such close proximity and if there are different crime patterns. But um, this particular crime pattern is something that obviously we know about. We know how it's occurring. And, you know, we developed our own task force at the direction of the police commissioner to uh, where it was... Uh, you know, auto theft people, detectives that investigate robberies and, and, and thefts and crimes like that and have supervision sitting on top of it uh, to work to get the people responsible off the street. We had a similar problem like this occurring late last year where a number of people were arrested, many of which were juvenile, and we kind of suspected it could be some of the same people that were involved. So we had a little bit of a leg up understanding what this crime might be and we went after the group that we felt was responsible and we were able to link them to a number of these crimes. Again, not to say that it's over, but it's again, holding these young people responsible and accountable for their actions. Was it gang related? No, it doesn't appear to be any type of gang. And, and again, I think the, the word gang, that we use that so loosely here nowadays, it's a bunch of people that want to want to commit crime, and they know each other. So, by definition, you can call it a gang. But are they Crips, Bloods, or BGF? No, um, they're just a bunch of uh, uh, young people making really poor decisions at this point in their life. And uh, we were able to capture several of them, but we know there's still several more in the street. And the message to them is either get your act together, or we're coming after you. Well, thank you for your service. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And um, the director T. J. Smith. How much time they look in the face if they do a crime such as like this? Well, the carjacking is really a serious uh, felony, and, and I, I don't know the exact um, amount of years that uh -huh. you face, but it's upwards of 20 to 30 years, I believe, wow. for carjacking. I mean, again, that's what you yeah. face. You're right, not gonna, right. you're not going to go to jail. These kids aren't for that uh, period of time. But the assaults, the robberies, the gun violations mm -hmm. on some of them are really serious charges where they could find themselves in jail on some mandatory time. Wow. Let's go to Miss Flowers. You live on Taxi Talk. How you doing? Hey, Larry Wallace. Great guest, great show. Pete, uh, Mr. TJ and Mr. Jeremy. You know, uh, just a question. You know, my heart goes out because two of these young individuals were homeless. And a lot of times, as a homeless advocate, you know, they flock together. Um, so I'm pretty sure just the two that I've known, other than the other four, probably was homeless. You know, what kind of bridge can we do for preventing, you know, the police, some of the services, some of the resources? I'm more interested to hear something like that. And even if it means follow-up, you know, like it should be some kind of preventive action in place before we just look at our children. And these are our children. At 16 and 17 years old, these are our children that are going away for years. It's like... Yes, they, they bump and grind and, and they did the crime. Not bump and, bump and grind, bump and rob. Bump and rob, but... They robbing us. When can we put some preventive actions in place? Where's the police department? Where's the mentors? Where's some of the, the young advocates in the community? And I'll um, hang up and listen to that response. Thank you, guys. Thank so, you. we appreciate that, Ms. Flowers. Um, and... Here's the deal. They they aren't likely going to go away for many, many years um, for these offenses. And one thing the commissioner has stated uh, often lately is the police department is often the last government agency that's involved with these young people before the crises really start going off in their lives. So we we catch these kids, 16 and 17 year olds, that are committing these crimes. Mm -hmm. But what else has happened? How many days a year have they attended school? Um, what what other issues do they have going on in life where some government entity potentially has failed them or, or parental failures that have went on gone on in their lives? We we also have a checks and balances where when you get to the age of sixteen or seventeen, you do know right from wrong, right. and you're in a situation where we're really fortunate that none of these 
uh, people who've done this have been killed themselves. You know what? I would get ready to say that. I would get ready to say that because so, cab drivers, I mean, yeah. you know, come on, folks, they ex police officers, people yeah. drive cabs, sure. ex judges, lawyers, doctors. And, and even if they're carrying their guns illegally, right. if they decide to use it to defend themselves a against a crime you like this, they're going to be shot. We have a bigger problem. So, we, we do have a number of programs, but it also, happen, how, how, how willing are people to be a part of programs that, you know, are for them? So that's the challenge with us when right. some are already down the path. So right now, folks, if you're listening, you out there, don't do it because uh, you get away one time, twice, but, right. you know, you're not going to keep getting away with stuff like this. this. Very serious stuff we're talking about. Uh, Lee, you live. How you doing, Lee? And then Mark. We got two minutes. Well, I wouldn't be the one making that decision, and I I would recommend you just go forward and get out of there. Yes, yeah. that's, that's probably the safest thing and the best thing. Um, you know, just get out of the situation because. It's only we're not dealing with one person. It's it's only making matters worse if people decide to take it in their own hands. And again, we're fortunate that that did not occur in many of these instances that took place. But you certainly understand that people are thinking like you think, and we don't want anything to escalate to that level because that only makes matters worse for everyone. Mark, last call. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, brother? Mark C. Great show. Thank you. Uh, One thing, you know, I know we got a we got a lot of homeless people, and like you say, it you know it starts way before. But right now, we we have so much balance uh, among our, our young people. Um, what what uh, what can we do, you know, uh, on the front end, you know, 